Bible Guide by Scott McTavish. Man-to-man advice for first-time fathers. Secrets revealed. Codes broken. Babies tamed. Page 154. No. <laughs> Page 1. Attention, new dads. You're about to have your world rocked. You may think you know what's around the corner, but trust me, brother, you don't. But don't worry, I've got your back. I'm not an obstetrician, pediatrician, or psychologist. No, I'm just a dude who's been through it twice. I haven't. I've only been through it once. I'm not really listening. I'm kind of halfway. And along the way, I broke the code and absorbed numerous invaluable tricks and secrets that will help you prepare for the forthcoming physical, psychological, and emotional dragon ride called fatherhood. I earn my stripes and I'll help you earn yours. Read on. This manual covers general timeline that starts just before birth and continues through the first three months or so, with a few toddler tips thrown in. It's all about practical recommendations and is not meant to serve as medical advice. If you want a man's definition, excuse me, if you want a man's definition of a pacifier or advice on how to de-stress, you have the right book. If you're wondering if a pacifier is I'm turning the page. If you're wondering if a pacifier is good for your child, you should consult a medical professional, or at least someone a lot smarter than me. In fact, your mailman is probably better qualified to comment. Well, maybe not. Stick with your pediatrician. After three or four months of fatherhood, you'll be a pro. Your pride will swell, and confidence will be yours. But for now, get ready for utter confusion and abject bewilderment. It has been so since the beginning of time and will continue to be so forever. So grab your boots and strap your helmet because the babies are coming. Chapter 1. Preparations. Your mission orders. Establish a plan and make provisions for your transformation from clueless civilian to competent father. Preparations. Let's do this. So you're going to be a dad. Take it from me. There's nothing like it, bro. Nothing. Sure, you'll have a few bumps in the road, but just wait until you hold your son or see your daughter smile at you for the first time. There are moments you'll never, ever forget. Believe me. But until then, you have a steep learning curve. And that's where I come in. Before we start, however, let's clear up a few things. First, I've tried to cut through the psychobabble and useless filler and get right to the straight dope. The contents herein are based on my own unique experiences and by no means the final word. They are honest, though you can learn from my hard-earned successes and mistakes. Take it as one man's straight-up report from the trenches. You'll also be relieved to know that I spoke to dozens of doctors, nurses, new parents, midwives, mimes, Eskimos, and ninjas. to Get the full picture of new parenthood. They provided extra bonus information you'll enjoy wrapping your head around, so strap on your thinking cap, Gus. When you see BCF, that means be cool, fool. Borrowed from the profound and deeply moving contemporary philosopher, Mr. T. At this point, I contemplated whether or not this book was written in 1972. Apparently, it was written in 2005, so we're good. Many of your anxieties and stresses, while valid, can be eliminated, and you'll just take a deep breath and chill. You'll see what I mean. And finally, this book is about the birth and following few months when you'll be ramping up to full-on fatherhood. Though pregnancy is a whole different can of worms, there are a few important points you'll need to know in order to survive, and I've included them as well. Enough said. Let's do this. Early in the game. If it's early in the pregnancy game for you, say three months or so, pat yourself on the back. I already did that. Thinking ahead. You may think that at this point most of the details are handled by the FPP, that is the female parenting partner, because military folks love acronyms. And in some cases they are, but preparation is key, and to truly understand and enjoy the birth process, and ultimately the first few months of fatherhood, you should get involved now. Trust me on this, it won't kill you, and you may actually have some fun. Get to know your obstetrician. First, let's clear something up. There's a couple of terms. An obstetrician is a doctor who cares for pregnant women and their babies from conception through delivery. A gynecologist is a doctor who specializes in women's equipment. 
Often doctors specialize in both areas and are referred to as OBGYNs. You've heard this before. By now, your FPP has chosen the OB who will deliver your NFU, new family unit. At least I hope so. Unless you're planning to do it yourself in the den next to your recliner, if that's the case, I urge you to drop this book immediately and check yourself into a psychiatric ward, or at least get yourself some nice restaurant-grade salad tongs, just in case. Otherwise, you should be attending the periodic checkups along with the FPP not only to get a status report on the NFU's progress, but also acquaint yourself with the OB and his or her staff. They are very knowledgeable and accustomed to clueless fathers-to-be, and if you're lucky, the way we were, they'll be very cool people too. During these visits, the FPP is, of course, the star of the show. You sit quietly and listen and will probably be confused most of the time. This is natural and expected. However, you are allowed to pipe up when some questions when they arise, and you should get familiar with the key psych- physiological terms. Vagina. You already know this one, obviously. Uterus, placenta, and umbilical, to name just a few. And for God's sake, no giggling. You need not attend every single appointment, but definitely go when a sonogram is scheduled so you can see the NFU in its alien form. You may even get a picture to stick on the fridge. A special report on C-sections, cesarean section, or section in nurse speak. Delivery is when the baby is unable to come out via the regular tunnel and must be taken out through an incision just above the pubic bone. Your OB may tell you months before birth that a C-section is necessary. Or in some cases, you may find out after the FPP goes into labor and exhibits some difficulties. Reasons for succession can include low levels of fluid in the womb, a distressed fetus, or health problems with the mom, such as high blood pressure. Even if your FPP is healthy and the sonograms indicate all's well, it would be wise to familiarize yourself with the C-section protocol just in case. Many OB offices have books and videos that explain the process and prepare you for the procedure, should it become necessary. And if it is, don't sweat it too much. It's a very common operation. Upward of 50% of deliveries are C-sections. More about that later. Drugs and stuff. Now is the time to discuss the different types of drugs available during delivery. For her, not you. Although you may want something after you see a head pop out of your FPPs in other regions. You should ask about epidurals and analgesics. I hope I pronounced that correctly. And the pros and cons associated with each. Of course, it's her decision, but you'll definitely want to know what's going on when they stick a needle in your lovely girl's spinal column and they start pumping in strange fluids. It's beyond the scope of this book to recommend any type of drug, but I've seen an epidural turn in a snarling, thrashing alligator into a kitten in the span of five minutes. So you do the math. Education equals serenity. There are a few tips more important than the one I'm about to lay on you. You may resist and go kicking and screaming, but believe me, on the big day, you'll be glad you went. Most obstetricians offer these classes or can refer you to a good teacher. Here goes. And I'm going to interrupt this with a critical survival tip. Attend childbirth education classes with the FPP. Doing so will prevent a major freakout when a human pops out of your FPP's private parts, as well as preparing you for your role as a birthing coach. The classes usually take place one evening a week for two months and are attended by eight or ten couples, all about as far along as you are in the pregnancy cycle. The classes cover everything from the actual mechanics of the birthing process, which is pretty damn cool, actually, to breathing exercises to postpartum psychology, but mainly you learn how to be a birthing coach. Your role as birthing coach is to keep your FPP as comfortable as possible and handle the logistics outside, pause for turning page, the birthing room, such as calling grandparents and fetching ice chips during the labor process. The breathing exercises are very important and you will use them in the delivery room. Pay special attention because the FPP will need your help while your son or daughter squirms out through the exit chute. You also learn how and when to give proper back rubs. The mechanics of the womb, very cool incidentally, relaxation techniques, and when to hold the FPP's legs, among other topics. Critical survival tip, 
pay special attention to the breathing exercise, you will use them during the pregnancy. Read now, rejoice later. As your NFU develops, he or she begins to pick up sounds from the outside of their current quarters at the Hotel FPP. They hear music, voices, dogs barking, and horns honking. In fact, they hear a muffled version of nearly everything you hear. Your voice becomes especially familiar to them, and on the big day, when they are jerked from the womb with a view and placed on a cold, bright table, and you talk to them face to face for the first time, they will recognize your voice and it will calm them down. And you will remember that one moment for the rest of your life. Believe that. You can establish early communication with your NFU by reading to them through the FPP's belly. Though it may seem odd at first, you will get the hang of it and they will respond with kicks and punches in a way of telling you, hey, I like that. Keep it up, big guy. And you can read anything. They don't care. New York Times, magazines, Sports Illustrated, children's book. As long as they hear your voice, they're happy. However, it may be wise to avoid any type of adult material, as the FPP may swat the back of your head if you tell the NFU about the one blonde and the priest and the chicken. One very cool residential effect of reading womb reading is the kid's response to books as they grow. Aside from his soccer ball, my NFU's favorite possessions are books. As At three months, he would instantly calm down when he would read to, and at six months, he knew how to flip through a book from front to back. Hell yes, I'm a proud dad. <laughs> Finances. Seems simple enough. Just budget for one more person. Who probably won't eat as much anyway, right? I weep for you, brother. If that's your outlook. <laughs> your whole financial life is about to get flipped. But with a little planning, you can get through it just fine. The following are a few of the issues you need to attend to. Insurance. Time to add baby and watch the premium jump. If you're, if you're covered by your job, and I hope you are, make certain pediatric care is part of your coverage. Also, get yourself a nice life insurance policy covering the family in case you get smoked, God forbid. A 30-year-old guy can purchase a term life insurance policy offering $500,000 in coverage for about $200,000 a year. That was in 2005. I don't think that's the standard. We're currently in a lot of situation with litigation on that. No political commentary here. Uh, critical survival tip. Check your health insurance to ensure that all of your expenses are covered, including anesthesiologist. If the FPP receives an epidural, obstetrician, hospital stay, aftercare, etc. Virtually everything in and around the hospital is expensive. So check the policy and to closely avoid nasty surprises, including if you don't have insurance and you get that little bell in the mail. <laughs> will, get yourself a good lawyer to write up a will. Or to cut the cost, buy a software program and do it yourself. You'll have to have it witnessed and notarized. Either way, be sure your assets have a place to go other than probate. For probate is a pain in the assets. <laughs> Play on words. Well played. College savings. I don't need to explain this one. Anyone who's been to college in the past 10 years knows what the costs are like. And they've jumped up in the last five also. And when your NFU is ready 18 years from now, who knows what kind of help. Hellish tuition bill will arrive in one of those annoying envelopes with the plastic windows. Better to plan with competent financial advisor now than to sell the boat later. Who the heck owns a boat? Anyway, so, oh, if you aspire to enroll into the NFU in a private school in a few years, the advisor tuition for the better schools matches the gross national product of the several small Caribbean nations. And that's just for Texas. Critical survival tip. The... The miracle of compound interest should be fully exploited when choosing a college savings plan. For example, $5,000 at 6% interest times 18 years is $14,271.70. That's if you don't touch it. It would obviously be much more if you added $1,000 annually for the 18 years or so if you found a higher interest rate. Also, to be sure to discuss tax benefits with your financial planner when setting up a college savings plan. If you're still here and you're not falling asleep, on to baby gear, food, and clothing. 
Dear God, women love baby gear. I hear her laughing next to me, by the way. Yes, much of it is necessary, but be prepared. Every bit of your beer money on onesies, sippy cups, binkies, and bouncy chairs. Don't worry, I'll explain all these later in the glossary. Baby does need a few new pairs of shoes, so be prepared to fill every single free inch of your home with baby paraphernalia. And forget about the beer money. You won't have to enjoy you won't have time to enjoy it anyway. Transportation. Go ahead. Grab the Kleenex. You will soon trade in your pickup for a minivan. And there's not a damn thing you can do about it. False. I am not buying a minivan. That will not happen. I have an SUV, damn it. It's good enough. At an ain't lane. A pediatrician. You should find a good pediatrician a few months before the birth. Your best bet is to get a referral from friends, relatives, or your OB. Get a few names and set up interviews at their offices if possible. Obviously, you want a physician with great credentials, reputation, and education. But you also want a doctor you click with on a more personal level. Why? Because the first time your NFU comes down with a fever or the, or the crop, I don't even know what that is, You'll freak out and need someone you can trust on the other end of the phone at 3 a.m. Pediatricians, like OBs, are a unique breed and are accustomed to wigged-out parents who call at midnight or burst through the clinic door with wild eyes and a feverish baby in tow. It's good to have a physician with an even temperament. He or she will keep you calm. Here are a few questions to ask at the interview. Are there other doctors in the practice? Who will take over if my primary physician is away? How many offices are in the practice? Where are they? What are the hours? Will the doctor visit the NFU as a newborn? What is the protocol for emergency calls, late night calls, emergency visits, etc.? Does the office have walk-in hours? Or is it appointment only? How does the billing work in relation to my insurance policy? Take an insurance card to the meeting, by the way. Who are the nurses and assistants? Do they have felony records? No, that's not, that's not really on here. I just thought it was funny. But ask any other questions that, you know, pop into your brain. Critical survival tip. Once you choose a pediatrician, put the office numbers and speed dial on all of your phones. <laughs> speed dial. Including your cell. <laughs> you will inevitably... You will inevitably... Inevitably need it while driving and don't want it to crash or break the law trying to find the number. Again, that was completely unnecessary advice and it even caused me to stumble in my reading. So, just we're just going to skip that. That didn't happen, right? It didn't happen. Countdown. One month to D-Day. Okay, so now you're educated. The paperwork is done. Get ready, big guy. It's party time. You've been through eight months of pregnancy. Fun, ain't it? And birthing classes, and now Junior's about to break on out. Or maybe you've spent the better part of three years trudging through the adoption process, chopping away at paperwork like vines in the jungle, and now your new recruit is on the bus home. Either way, slappy, your life's about to change big time. And no matter what you anticipate, it'll be a thousand times more intense than you ever imagined. The lows are low, and the highs are better than any drug on earth. Sure, you're nervous now, but just wait until that little guy or girl wraps their hand around your finger and smiles up at you with those gnarly gums. Your heart will break a million times in a good way, and you'll forever be daddy, and you'll wear your stripes proudly. But there are a few more cats to skin. Nasty, screeching cats with claws like razors. So let's break out the K-bars and get busy. It's go time. All right, I'm going to put a pause on that right now. We've already read 15 pages, so if you're still here and you're still listening, uh, stay tuned. Next time, we're going to start at page 15 of The New Dad's Survival Guide by Scott and Dad. There's no point in me whispering that, but I thought it was funny. <laughs>